Oh, hi! Welcome back to 24 to Hit. We're all back again. We've just had about, you know, 30 minutes of playing with the Discord soundboard, and we're all <laughs> pretty entertained by that. So, uh, yeah, welcome back. Let's get stuck back into... I hear my voice coming through, and I know it's Buddy Jacob. <laughs> it looks like it's Maggie. Ah, oh, Maggie! Technical difficulties, nah. Sorry, Mags. <laughs> Just calling her out. As I said, we aren't professional. This is the charm. This is what you come to see. All right. Last we left what? off. God damn it, Maggie. <laughs> I'm just going to mute on my actual thing. <laughs> Last we left off, Barry and the Hoots had been out in the town in the city of Metal. Old Guy made his way over to Fortune Teller's shop, who read his fortune, turned out to be an old kobold lady. Read your fortunes of you and your friends, telling you to head to the new world to find yourself a special mm. item. Yes, excited. Old Yagna went out trying to buy some stuff, managed to barter his way to a holy avenger, giving away Garad's nice flame tongue sword. Uh, Alana and Molazar ended up going to dinner with one of Molazar's uh, friends from the hand, Lady Theandra Manticora, who has pressed them to help her get out of the current bind both the three remaining members of the hand are in. And uh, Deadeye uh, snuck into a library, disguised as some old guy with a stutter, stole some books on how to, you know, boat... Also stole some Dwarf Lemon Party uh, pornography novel, changed the covers on it, and decided to give it to Molzar as a, uh, you know, fake spell book, which sort of ended all right. Ended up with Molzar under his bed, but I suppose that's the uh, required outcome of a book like that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you then found your way into the Thieves Guild here in mental as well asking around to see if you could get a hand in locating a ship and uh, work and got pressed into uh, talking to one captain kale of the kraken's fury who you have now uh, hired to take you across the sea or ocean actually called earth big over to the colonies that Myrtle have set Myrtle and Elantra have set up in this new world, because I'm not that inventive yet. Um, across the ocean, a land of untouched beauty and wilderness, uh, full of uh, uh, wonders, and giant lizards, and natives that seem to have the ability to transform to half animal, half people. After you finish your meeting with Captain Kale, you are now got, I think it was a day to uh, get your supplies, organize your affairs before you head out across the ocean in search of the Pirate King Horatio Horngold. So, my friends, what would you like to do? This is it. Was this just me or is this the group? It's everyone. It's oh, everyone. Yeah. You've now met your friend and uh, organising um, what we, you need now. Have we got enough supplies? I think we're still meant to do that. Yeah. Go to the apothecary? Yes. Right. Um, I'm just going to say as well that I have an attachment on my gun now because I got Ray of Frost, so it shoots liquid nitrogen. Of course it does. <laughs> it's just, I'm just giving it a cool in-universe explanation. You're giving it a cool explanation, are you? Terrible. Ter terrible. I am a father. Dad jokes. <laughs> um, should we go get some healing potions? The apothecary yes. now, I believe. I, think I have two, is... actually. <laughs> Be the alchemist the emporium. No, no worries. That's on the other side of town. So you will pass through the markets here. 
uh, as you Ooh. move through town. So anything you wish to... Do, 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 do. I'm just looking at my notes here, guys. Don't mind me. That's number... The... Where were we? Six. Yeah, six. You're down at the docks there. Six, the harbour. Yep. Uh, market district, yeah. So as you're moving past the docks back into the main area of Myrtle, you, you um, come back through the the giant market that's set up in this part of town, just stalls of, of anything you could think of, um, exotic animals, fruits, vegetables, weapons, hides, um, uh, cooking utensils and ingredients um, literally anything you could put your mind to within reason of of course is there anything that sells like armor armor um you see a few people selling what seems to be like decorative pieces nothing that would like protect you that would be more of um the blacksmiths Okay, because like, I've only got studded leather armor. I want something better. You, you know, you know, you personally, Alana, would know like the makeup of the city and where you can find. So for you, you know, like the best place to find protective armor at a good price that isn't magical would be yet yeah, the um, what well, I don't know, the blacksmith's forge. Very apt name. Um, I believe that is in the southern part of the city. That's just above the market. Just to, oh, literally just above the market. Look at that. Okay. So, Am I called ahead there? Does anyone want to come with me? Um, I, I I will, um, but we I don't will, do it right away. But... While going through the market, um, flipping through very quickly um, through some of the books on boating and life at sea, heard it's beneficial to have um, a companion animal. So I'm going to try and get a parrot. I want to buy. I want to buy a parrot. You're in luck. Like I said, there is a stall selling what seems to be exotic animals. Um, cages stacked up on themselves, um, like twice a man's height. Um, you see a few um, people bustling around the cages, tending to the animals. Um, they're all of different shapes and sizes. You see... Um, Cages full of exotic birds. You see cages with snakes, like giant snakes, similar to your actual snake, Tyson. <laughs> uh, for for everyone watching at home, Tyson has this giant uh, albino carpet python. Pretty much. Oh, Darwin you python. Have fat heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fucking huge. <laughs> it's great. I love pythons. Um, yeah, see that wrapped around a log inside a cage. You see um, a few weird-looking dogs. Uh, you see um, what looks to be a panther in a in a cage. Um, you, what another one that which <laughs> looks to be a tiger in a cage, um, and um, a few exotic fishes. Just yeah, all kinds of weird and wonderful things. You see a lot of. Um, uh, high to do people sitting there looking at these different animals, you know, and Alana and your experience seeing this would be um, people like to have exotic things to show up other people. As you um, get closer to this stall, uh, Deadeye, you see what seems to be the main salesperson, which you originally assumed was um, part of the menagerie here. Um, it's a giant being about nine foot tall, um, giant ears, a long trunk, and these giant three fingered hands. It's it's an elephant on two legs. Mm -hmm. And you see, let's see. Yeah, and you hear this this person bellowing out. It's like, come on, come on. See the exotic animals that have come from far off of the seas. I have brought in only the best. Only the finest animals for your menageries or for your cook pots, if so be it. Would you say he's the elephant man? He is an elephant man, yes. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you wish to do? 
Uh, yeah. So I, I would just go up um, and I'll just tell him straight that I'm, uh, you know, look, looking at uh, getting a helpful companion for a long journey at sea. So like perhaps a bird I've heard is good or a monkey. Just, just having a chat. I'm You're just having a general to... shot. <laughs> You've come to the right place. And you see this man, this man, um, he's bald the head, wrapped in a turban, long flowing robes. He's from a different place entirely. His accent kind of gives it away. Um, well, you brought many, many animals that would help you in your journey. A monkey, do you, here we have one of these ones. And he pulls out this um, cage and inside is a monkey just perched there. Very round, hairy face, long tail. And he's like, this one is very good at alerting you at problems. Hmm? And then he starts like poking at the uh, at the cage, and this monkey just starts screaming the loudest loudest noise you've ever heard, ever. And everyone <laughs> in the market's like, ah, as you can see, over the top of the monkey, these hyla monkeys will scream at the uh, drop of any provocation. You can hang them off the bow of the ship. If they see anything bad, they start screaming. If they see anything good, they start screaming. It may take a bit of training. <laughs> and he puts it back. But if you wish to go into the more traditional lot, I have the most exotic birds of paradise you have ever seen. And he opens up a cage and pulls out this... this um, they're quite big. It's a macaw. And mm -hmm. he's like, these, these are from the jungles of the New World, yes. I have traveled there myself. I have seen the wonders. And this can mimic a person's voice entirely. Come on, Bert. Say your things. And then it says back in his voice, scam the suckers, scam the suckers. It's... <laughs> <laughs> ignore that, ignore that. And he puts it back. Oh, and he gets in real close. Now his head's huge and he gets in real close. And he, instead of, you know, how like a salesman puts their hand on your shoulder, his trunk on your shoulder, Oof. maybe you'd like something a little more exotic. You look like a man of fine taste. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm still disguised in my like kind of poor ratty clothes. But yeah. <laughs> I'll like nod and be like, yes, yes, yes. Um, I'll lean in. Tell me more. Tell me more. And he reaches behind him. He pulls out another cage that's draped with like like a leather cloth. And as he puts mm -hmm. it down on his um, table, he's got in front of him, it's shaking, and you hear like this hissing sound from it now. <laughs> snapping of jaws he's like now this is another animal from the new world nothing you have ever seen before and he pulls it back and there's this two this small two-legged feathered animal with a like a uh, big uh, uh snout full of sharp teeth it's it's whipping its head around like real a quick velociraptor it's not a tiny velociraptor, it's the actual velociraptor because <laughs> screw you, Jurassic Park. And it's like like running around in this like tiny cage and jumping into the walls. He's like, these, these things, if you get a few of them and launch them on your enemies, that enemy is gone in a matter of minutes. Trust me on that one. We found out the hard way when we tried to catch it. And I'll say, um, is it trainable? Yes. <laughs> Inside check. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, eleven. Eleven. Uh, make it, make it sixteen. Make it sixteen. <laughs> yeah, he is lying through. His <laughs> This about Jamie to tell us that. <laughs> this thing is uh, as vicious as can be. Um, the rest of you, if you're you're with him and you're looking at some of the other animals you're looking at, so get on closer inspection. The panther has these two giant tentacles that come out of its back. I don't have Barry with me, do I? Yeah, there's an owlbear just walking around with you. <laughs> cool. All right, I'm going to be 
keeping close to Barry because I'm pretty sure this might just escalate the animals. Yeah, and that's an actual tiger in a cage as well. Um, and also the dogs seem to be able to um, shift themselves from side to side inside these these cages, but not seem to exit the cage. So does any of my animals suit your prerequisites? Uh, I'll ask like, uh, what's the what's the price looking like? You know, what what are your what are you charging for these magnificent beasts? Well, for the monkey, fifty gold. For the bird, the parrot, that would be two hundred gold. And for this thing here, mm, I would say maybe three hundred. Due to, to its uh, exotic nature. Um. All right. Uh, in general, actually, can I try and persuade him? To, I'll say to, I'll say two hundred for the monkey and the bird. Um, I don't believe I um and trained enough to deal with something so new and exotic when it comes to the Velociraptor. Oh yeah, make a persuasion check. Four. <laughs> oh. My price is a firm friend. It takes a lot to get these exotic animals and bring them across the sea without them perishing. Um... All right, well, I'm go. I will. I'm going to purchase the um the core of the bird of paradise, and I'll I'll, I'll leave the monkey because I have a quite a high passive perception. Um, as a quick thing, do I know anything about this dude? Have I seen him around before? Roll a history check. History would. Be oh, your... thank you. I've got plus nine to history, oh, so yeah. I was hoping that's you could your just general recollection of of that. Ah, uh, thirteen. Oh yeah, he this this fellow you've seen him around. You don't know his name, um, but yeah, most of the people have told that um, this giant elephant man he sells um, exotic animals. You know, a few of the nobles in town have bought um, big cats off him, and they mm-hmm. keep them in their gardens to um, you know spruce up the place as they do. Um, there have been a few deaths, just mainly the help. But obviously the nobles don't care. Okay. But this is the first time you've seen him bringing these uh, lizard-like animals from across the sea. This is a new thing. Oh, I just think, how do they control them? Like, can I make a collar or something that shocks them? But that's kind of animal cruelty, and I don't really vibe with that. <laughs> well, all these animals are in tiny cages. <laughs> So, yeah, I already feel bad. I can't even suggest that. That's awful. I do not contone animal cruelty. Me so either. Fuck this guy. <laughs> I'll make like phosphorus, but I'm not going to hurt the animals. That good. Very good, my friend. Very good. And he gets out the parrot and he pops it on your shoulder. <laughs> and it just goes, scam the suckers. Scam the suckers. <laughs> yeah. And he takes your gold. And he's like, thank you. Thank you for doing business. And he just swings around to the next person. And just goes full on attack, trying to get that Velociraptor into someone's hands, and just completely waves you off now. So, seeing he's distracted, is there? Um, does he have like a money chest sitting around? Um, yeah, you saw him put it into a chest that's um, pretty much sitting off to his side. Um, mm-hmm. It is a chest, and it is strapped to his belt because he is that big. <laughs> so he's oh, it to sounds like the money into like a little bum bag did he um did he look like it would like did he look like he locked it no no it's just open and closed it's on his hip it's just there yeah with um with how with how big he is can i try and duck down hide underneath his giant elephant legs and then kind of just dip into the little money box ah just make a stealth check. Perfect. 
36, I'm just going to guess. Uh, <laughs> 20, 20, 23. 23. I was going to say, we can make it 28 if we need, but I don't think we need to. <laughs> you guys go to congratulate Deadeye on his, his new Macquarie he's got. He's just gone. <laughs> he was just right next to you and he's just gone. Um, so, yeah, straight under the table, just under, up next to him, side of hand check to get into his little money box. Twenty-six. Uh, you have successfully got your gold back, and another three hundred <laughs> that he has made during the day. <laughs> Lovely. Um, <laughs> Add five hundred gold back to you. <laughs> Just rob the elephant. He's too busy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna. Roll, gonna... I'm not even gonna bother rolling against a twenty-six. <laughs> How much more gold did you get back? Sorry, five hundred. Right. He's just taking um, this man's um, entire um, daily income. <laughs> I just and I'll just keep walking, and then I'll I'm, I'll talk, start talking to the parrot, and I'll be like, "Scan the suckers," <laughs> <laughs> and I'm head, I'm heading off. I'm heading off with Alana. <laughs> all right. Does anyone else here want to have a look at something in the market at all? Uh, no. I'll go for a pirate hat. I'm gonna get myself a hat. Oh, easy enough. There are different clothes here that uh, specialize in quick, cheap wear for the um, the dock workers and the sailors. So yep. you just get yourselves a, yourself a nice looking pirate hat for about two gold. Cool. Nice. Now, Kyle, and gonna... milliners are no easy job. A what? A milliner. A milliner. Hat makers. Aren't they, uh, what is it? A haberdashery? What Go is down it? to your local haberdashery. <laughs> haberdashery, yes. Um, no, it's a milliner. For yeah. hat. Is it a tricorn hat or is it like a like an Anzac style slouch hat? Or it's a, it's a, a tricorn hat, just like. I need um, to visualize. Yeah. They're the old Jack Sparrow hat and similar to what Deadeye has, but Deadeye's is more. Um, What's the difference between a land tricorn and a sailor's tricorn? There is a difference. I should know this. I think, is it like Did the positioning? I, mean, I know the weirdest shit, man. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> it's the DM to know the weirdest Pretty. shit. Yep, so you got your lovely hat. Uh, yep, and I'm going to look at getting a another musical instrument. I can't remember what one I have, but I want to switch it up. Something else, maybe something I can use that isn't a, uh, Get a wood pan flute. I've already got a pan flute. Well, thankfully, um, music is very prevalent on ships. They use it to keep spirits high, so you do find a market stall that specialises in musical instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an old man there, um, like long scraggly beard, long white hair, sitting there, and you see him carving a block of wood out into the shape of a loot. Mm -hmm. And um, doesn't look up when you approach. What are you doing? It's just there. Carving away. I just got the way I'm going I'm to start looking around to see what's around first before bothering him. I'm just going to keep expecting. So oh, what other instruments do I see? Um, you see lutes, you see harps, you see drums, um, all finely made, very finely made. Um, flutes, lutes, um pan flutes um a set of bagpipes okay all right i was gonna go for an accordion this beautiful accordion <laughs> with uh, complete with the keys and and everything made out of beautiful beautiful leather and this wood that just shines in the sun Perfect for Mariner's revenge songs. I hmm. uh, I was gonna go for a banjo, but I'm lovely accordion. There is a banjo there. <laughs> I can't have too many instruments on me. I'm not that much of a thing. Um, 
No, I'm going to go for the, the, the awkward Weird Al scenario with this. This is going to be good. I'm going to go for the accordion. As like you go Weird to, Al? Yeah. As you go to grab it, the old man, without even looking at you, just states, do you know how to play that, Sonny? No. <laughs> but I'm going to try it right now. I'm going to give it my, my shot right now. He looks up, and no. as you go to grab it, he puts his hand on it, and he's like, you think I'm just going to let you play my, my merchandise without, uh, you know, selling it to you first? What if you break this thing? Especially if you've never played it before. Okay, hold up. I'm trying to think. I fed a calling to this instrument. I Let me play it. If I play it, if I play it well, um... What, how much is it worth again first? We, I don't think we discussed price. How much is it worth? I'd say he's got a tag on it for about 100 gold. It's specialty made. Okay. Yeah. If I play it well, give it me for 75. If I do it wrong, if I break it, I'll pay you double. He looks at you like, friend, I've carved that out of mahogany myself. The keys out of ivory I've got from... Elephants from across the sea. Are we all together? The leather itself is made out of uh, mystical animals. Can't even pronounce the bloody name of. And you want me to let you just play it? And if you break it, you pay me double. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> you better play it. Well. Are we all together, by the way, Carl? If you want to be. At this rate. I'll, I'll be nearby. Okay. So we do a performance. Performance check. Alright, let's do it. Oh, what I are you trying to play? <laughs> What are you trying to play? Wait, wait, wait. Um I'm <laughs> I don't know. I don't I'm, literally my brain has gone another one bites the dust on the accordion has literally <laughs> came to my mind. <laughs> and you just start to be you just, any you see that? And that's, song. <laughs> pardon? Any song by the Decemberists. Oh. As you start no. to play this song on this thing, people start to like turn and look, and you've got a crowd going like forming around you. I'm the doing guy... a dad jig at the same time, yeah. just so you know. As as the guys put down this this half finished loot, and he's just like, you see a small tear come down from the side of his cheek. <laughs> and as as you finish a song, and everyone gives you a standing. A, Ovation, dissipate, he just looks at you and like, they said you'd come. <laughs> the only man that is willing to to uh, stake his reputation on playing an instrument no one has ever even fucking heard of. <laughs> a man that can play it so beautifully to bring a tear to its will to make his eye. My friend, you can definitely have that for 75 gold. <laughs> okay, I give him, I give him seventy five gold. I'm gonna do it. That's good. That's golden. So, and as you think, you clasp your hands. Uh, you brought, you've brought honor back to this old man's heart. You look after that instrument; it will serve you well. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, it comes with a case. I'm gonna put the case on my side as yep. I carry it. Yep. So. Fantastic! I'm loving this. Yeah, as you like skipping away, I think you've done. You just hear him laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. <laughs> you now have a very well made accordion. <laughs> uh, I, I I was hoping for a perk with that after I did that, but that's okay. <laughs> a, a perk? Yeah. I'll give you inspiration. Hell yes. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Learning to play the accordion and the fly. It's an instrument you've never seen. You're a big orc man, and you've just got an accordion yep. and and, <laughs> and <the> buddy part. <laughs> We're gonna have a good time. <laughs> Yagna's like, I'm ready to go sailing, guys. <laughs> I've got my I three swords. I've got my accordion. I've got my hat. I'm ready to take on the kit of the pirate world. <laughs> All right, the other two. <laughs> Dan and Nick, do you guys want to look for anything? Um, 
I'm gonna actually Alana, you said you had uh started leather. Yeah, started leather armor. I just wanna see if I can get something better because I've got 14 AC and it hurts. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Alright, you can look at that when you get to the armor. Should I leave the group while they're going to the armor? <laughs> sure thing. Alright, Ed had to be solo. <laughs> right, well, no, I didn't mean nothing. No, no, no. So I <laughs> Yeah. So they're taking off to slink as off. Ed I tricked me last night. I did <laughs> want to do some study. Yes, okay. What are you after? We'll, we'll do the, your, you first. As these guys head off to the armory, you stay back in the marketplace. Oh, yeah, after. In the marketplace, but I want to head to, say, the library. I want to find a, a spell book or something that I can copy from. Okay, we can give that a go. So you head on up towards the library, not too far away from where you are. Yep. Again, well, you went there the first time. It's only today. Again, you see the scene of this giant library open to the public, no less. So this is quite foreign to you. Yep. Um, coming from the Magisterium, they kept a lot of knowledge under lock and key, only giving it out when people got to the right levels of, uh, you know, experience enough to, to wield whatever was written in those books. Um, but here, um, people young and old, wealthy or poor, are able to go in, take out a book, and um, do what they will, as long as they bring that book back within good condition. Entering in, you are greeted by a um, a dragonborn man this time, with blue scales and wearing a nice robe with a badge with his with his name on it that says um, Roger. And he comes up and he's like, "Oh, hello, uh, uh, young man. Uh, welcome to the uh, the Grand Library of Myrtle." Are you after anything in particular? Uh, well, look. I'm with a party of adventurers. And it was their idea to go sailing west, I think it is. Yes, west. Actually, west. To do the... <laughs> yeah. So, look. I want to improve my skills. I'm not sure what you would have here. But whilst, as it's going to be a quite a long trip, I'm looking for something that I can use to study and to increase my abilities whilst we are on the boat, seeing as we'll have a lot of downtime. Oh, well, that actually sounds like a very interesting um, quest. I actually haven't heard of any adventuring types in some time. I thought they all died out years ago. Um. Well... You heard about what happened, um, what, what, was it in the courtroom? In the courtroom, yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, nasty business. Devils and demons appearing out of the walls and out of people. Yes, so that was my party that stopped them. Indeed. He, he's taken aback and, and ding, he looks you up and down and like, you don't look like the uh, adventuring type. What is your purview then, friend? What? Hey, sorry, you cut out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. So you, you do not look like the adventuring type. What? What is your purview? What do you specialize in, friend? Um, fine arts. <laughs> fine arts. <Is> that, <laughs> that helps you beat back demons and devils. <laughs> he's he's so confused. He's like super excited to talk to you, and you're just like giving him nothing. And he's like, "Oh, <laughs> well." <sighs> One sec. Yeah. So I will. I'm not gonna. I don't want to damage him. <laughs> okay. But. I want to slyly kind of do a, a chill touch, and as the ghost or spectral hand come out, I just want him to see it. I don't want him to fucking hurt him. <laughs> just say like you did when you first started this game, the old um, shh with the, yeah. <laughs> the spectral, and he said, like, oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, shit. You, you are a, a wizard of sorts. Oh, this is, this is remarkable. Hence uh, the study. Uh, in, indeed. Are you, uh, are you registered with the Mantles Guild of Wizards, then? No, but I come from the Magisterium. Do you have any proof of that, friend? Because we have a section that is only allowed to be handed out to those of uh, arcane nature. Do I have proof? Fuck. Can I name drop? Yeah, you can try. You can try anything you want. Um. What's her name? Fuck. Which one you after? No, no, it's right. I'm a, a colleague of Lady Theandra Mentagora. I used to be trained with her. That's the best I have. I have no formal document on me. I don't keep that with me. And as you say her name, if the if the um, color could drain from the scales on this man's face, <laughs> straight on face, it would. As he just th- says it wide-eyed, mouth agape. Uh, oh. Is that yeah. enough proof for you? Yes. Um, something could very much be arranged. Um, Is that going to cause any problems? Your body language has changed. Not if anyone finds out, at least. And is someone going to find out? Because right now it's just you and me. <laughs> and he's <laughs> a bead of sweat. He's like, no, de- definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. Um, Lady uh, Mazigoro comes in here quite often um, looking for study um, out of the prying eyes of the college. Uh, this, this way. This way, and he leads you up to a um, service door into a staircase that winds up to one of the higher levels. Um, up, right up, we're talking maybe six, seven stories up above the main area um, is a landing that has been um, held behind a locked door, like um, staff only access. Um, and and uh, uh, recognise people's only may enter, such and such. This, um, looking over into the main atrium, you see that the bookcases go all the way up to this, and a lot of people are getting um, books down from higher levels via, like, magical means and apparatus. Like, they're books stacked upon books stacked upon books. Um, but up here you see a collection of what seems to be study material for for mages, um, books on herbalism, books on um, different uh, schools of magic um, and whatnot. Um, and he's like, well, well um, Mr. Uh, I never, <laughs> never got your name. <laughs> you won't need my name. Very well. Um, what was the order of study you were looking for? I can maybe uh, find you something here that could that could help. Well, we are going on a ship. Yes. Something that could maybe aid me, aid us whilst we're sailing. Something to do with wind, something to do with water, something to there do is, with fire, even. There was some old study material from a, a mage long ago that used to uh, sail with the navy. He augmented the ship's abilities using wind and water magics. Maybe there's some spells in there, maybe some special uh, notes. Um, would, would That's that a good be? place to start. Excellent. And um, he gives you... Um, what looks to be an old soiled travel log. Like this book is water damaged. It's it smells of salt and seawater. And opening up, flipping through, you do see a few spells in there. Um, quickly, just you know, just opening to a random page and flipping through, you see the spell tidal wave. Okay. So this is full of um, maritime and. Um, 
and uh, water-based and wind-based magics that could help you. So, uh, is there is there anything else uh, that could interest you at all? Sir? And I take this as well? Yes, I'll um, just put it down under Lady Mantigora. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> she won't mind if you're um, a good friend of hers. Um, yes, do so. I have a few other books that she was reading that may be of your purview as well. I noticed Yeah, you'd be, you'd be interested to see what she's been reading. Excellent. And um, he brings out some books on um, trying to uh, prolong someone's life magically. Another book on um, summoning spells, on, on spells that will... Um, hide your presence from other people and now you're flipping through that book you realize that's true you didn't really have any knowledge of her being alive or where she was or even if she existed there was something there masking that and you feel like there are a few spells here that uh he has taken liberties with one being a very high level spell right in the back called mind blank Mind blank. Okay. Mm. A spell that, um, a very high level that allows the caster to cast on themselves for 24 hours, I believe, and it allows their mind and presence not to be altered by any other means. Okay. Um, so, just Either with wizards, wishes? can I copy this down it and will then take study time. it later? Yeah, it will take or... time. Like, you will have to take the books with you. And, we'll have to take it with me. Yeah, and you'll need to get the proper... Well, you've got your book, and you just need the proper inks and, and, and magical inks and whatnot to transcribe the spell from there into your words in your spell book so you can use it. It just okay. takes time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All so, right. But you have access to this stack of books now, and um, depending on how much time you put into study and and um, copying, I will give you a variety of random spells that you do not have yet. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so that's pretty much... I'll just take the books. Yep. He's like, hey, oh, thank. So uh, th they need to come back in the condition that they've been giving <laughs> as you're walking down the stairs. <laughs> sir, 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 th they need to be returned. <laughs> Lady Mandagora will return them for you. F and very I well. Yeah. And out, out the library you go. Your new books. Excellent. Perfect. All right. If that's him done, you all take off to the blacksmiths. Let me just find right. While we're doing that, just quickly, can I buy some, like, miscellaneous things in the market? Oh, of course. Just, like, if it's just random stuff, I'm not going to roleplay every uh, store vendor but it, yeah random 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 bits of metal a winch and a shitload of rope yeah yeah all of that so what was it again a rope a winch and just some random bits of metal i'm gonna try and make something yeah yeah so all up that would probably cost you maybe 20 gold like oh, not... uh, and and kind of like a like a hook like I you just let's just say I get the stuff I think I need, and then yeah, I'll tell okay. you eventually yeah. when it gets to it. We'll see if it works. Never become a pirate. The, He's fucking close enough. Or you just need a peg leg and a fucking hook hand. Hook hand. I've been reading about boating. Man, hook hand, car door. No. Something okay. like that. Excellent. All right, so you head over to. Um, the, the Blacksmith's Forge is a giant building uh, um, that once was maybe something smaller that has been uh, expanded upon over over years of use and, and um, service to have several forges inside. You hear the hammering away of, of many, many hammers. And um, as you enter through the front, you see, um, like, you've been to other blacksmiths in the area. And they're usually small, um, one-person run buildings in various places, say. And yours, say, yeah, no, yours was um, more of just a guy in a tent <laughs> in your village. 
doing so, but this is an industry. You just um, enter and um, mannequins on every wall in different styles of armor. Some um, very well-made elven pieces made out of what seems to be lightweight metals. Um, big, heavy, orcish and, and dwarven armors um, set on big, heavy set mannequins for um, full plate and, and whatnot. Um, horse armors set up along banisters and and whatnot weapons of every make and description some um being meticulously made others being churned out into what looks to be for lack of a better term a a discount bin of just 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 swords um as you enter there is nothing oh no one in the store like you hear all the commotion outside and um, you see coming out from the back this very wide set red dragonborn male um, covered in like soot and sweat and, and dirt holding like um, seems to be a rag wiping the the dirt and whatnot from his hands he sees you all coming he's like well met friends what brings you to the forge today? Uh, my armor sucks. <laughs> I need something better. It's walks, terrible. I'm sick of it. He walks over to you and he gives you a look around. He, he's standing over top of you. Like, you're not short, really. But this thing is is imposing as he gets down and he looks at you. Can I have that on record? I've never been told that in my life. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> oh, that's right. Maggie's teeny weeny. Uh, uh, my character's five foot six, so yeah, four well, inches taller than me. Yeah, you're not that short by any means. But this thing is huge, this guy. And he's looking you up and down, mm. he's looking at the parts, and he's like, Where did you get this? Found it. It looks like it. It's terrible. It's there seem to be burns and bullet holes and uh, all sorts of... What should you be doing? What you really should be asking is what haven't I been doing? <laughs> Fair enough. Not in a weird way, just in a fighting way. That thought wouldn't even have crossed my mind, young, young lady. Um, well, what are you after in? Do you want some more protection? You want to be able to move nimbly? More, more protection. I can move fine with magic. That's no problem. You don't look like the type to wear heavy armor, though. No, but like somewhere between a light armor and a heavier armor. <laughs> and he just gives you like this this one razor. So you mean medium? Yeah, medium yeah. armor. I didn't know if that was a law thing. <laughs> that exists. <laughs> Okay. Just chain mails and half plates and, and whatnot. Well, you would go more with the, a good breastplate, really. Um, yeah, scale mail would be ideal. Yes, I could, I could work that in underneath the plate. Have something nice covering the chest to stop any bullets by the look of it. There is a lot of bullets. Uh, Some misfires, to be, to be honest. Thing the tape is into a point, so they bounce off. There's not much you can do against a bullet nowadays, though, which is kind of well, made we have, uh, armor obsolete. I have other so. bullets. We can just kill their bullets with my bullets. Don't think that's how that works. <laughs> And well, I, I do um, have a nice breastplate with scale mail to uh, provide you with uh, the range of movement you need to. And he looks at the weapon that you have holstered. And, oh, my fight. giant musket? Yeah. That's fight. got like attachments and shit. That thing. Which, yeah, seeing look, that, he that kind thing of turns his light. Nose it's up actually at. really lightweight. I made it, so it's, it's easy to carry. But mm. how much do you want? Mm. And he goes over, picks it up, and oh god, uh, and looks through his uh, 
So yeah. say that I am, you know, Lots. from one of the noble, the noble families in the city and I would happily advertise his works. Well, he's looking through his logs and seeing discount. how much it is. I'm actually looking it up. Um, <laughs> I have money. I don't know why I'm trying to be a cheapskate. I just don't think I can stop being a cheapskate. Yeah, royal oh, family. Yeah. Hey, Mags, how much AC is your studded leather? Um, It gives me... 12. 12. And he holds out, yeah, this beautiful set of um, scale mail armor that um, mm-hmm. you get with a breastplate in the front. So, like, you put the scale mail and you put the breastplate on. Um, you say, oh, for this ensemble, 75 gold. It's very well okay, made. So- it's about your size. If not, I could taper it in a bit. It'll only take me a few few hours to resize to How much? Um- how much, would that just be 14 AC? So I would be at 16. 14 plus your dex modifier, I believe it says. My dex is 2, so that would be 16. Oh, 16. well, it's still an improvement. Um, oh. I mean, I'm buying a lot from you at once. You're buying or I, a set I of don't arm. know how to haggle. <laughs> yeah, but like, <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting semi-famous. Like, I'm, I'm going to just try and be an influencer I've here. I've never seen hide nor hair of you. Such a fucking owlbear. I'm just going to pull out the flyer and be like, yes. it's everywhere on the east, in the east side. And he takes it and he looks at it and he looks at you. I mean, the court case with he, he the demons? He pulls out some, some glasses from, from, his, from his shirt and puts them on, like, on the end of his little dragon nose. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> the actual glasses are really helping. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad I can't take them off. I just go blind. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's that's rather nifty. Adventure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know that that big like... that big court case with all the demons and the fire and the killings and the, yeah, we we prevented it. We well, we we didn't prevent it. We stopped it. It didn't anyway. sound like you prevented much or a few. Days. Wait, we stopped it. I I stopped up my words. <laughs> <laughs> and very well. Well, for. The first adventurers to enter my shop in ever. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll sell this to you for 60 gold. Done. Excellent. <laughs> That's how you haggle, right? I might <laughs> ask if there's anything for me too, just for the hell of it. Um, does that mean I can down, replace so... it? Yes, yes. Just buy the, the, the take the, the scale off, get the scale mail, put that on. He looks you up and down and say, ah, yes, I'm a... a Great orc male, yes, a big man, a big weapon. It, I pose a little. And he looks and he sees two <laughs> smaller weapons at your side. He said, oh, you were one of those nimble fighters. Indeed. <laughs> and then he sees that you've got, like, enchanted weapons, and he kind of is like, Ugh. well. And he sees the accordion, don't forget, the accordion's still hanging off the my belt. The accordion, these, <laughs> what are you? Uh, well, I have some plate mails that you could, if you want to enter yeah. battle as a tank, just a, just a giant man. Yeah, in, in with the hat on and everything. I oh, don't forget, I forgot to, the, the, I put on the the dwarven kind belt, so I'm pretty sure I have a beard now too, so did I'm... You put on, did you put on the dwarven yeah, kind belt? Yeah, yeah, I did. When did we do that? When Did you do it just recently? Uh, we did it last session. We did talk about it, and we said I had it, and I was like, "All right, I'll put it on." So you put it so, on. You put it on this morning. Yeah. yeah. Roll yeah. me a D one hundred. Ah, okay. But I'll look for one <laughs> for a second. There. Um, Max, can I buy your studded armor? Studded leather. Where is the D one hundred? I don't no, have to. Give it to you, man. <laughs> she just gives it to you. <laughs> Thank you. It's got holes I'm in it. I don't give a shit. There it is. Oh, actually. Give it. Can you leave it with me for a night? Sure, Nani. I know a little bit about fixing shit. Like, oh, I'll just cast mending on it. Does that Your work, top Kyle? Lip. Yes, actually, that would work. I think I have. I'm just gonna cast mending on it, and then I'll give it to you. Your top lip has been tingling all day. After you sure. put this belt on, like you feel just this this area here, just this area, you know, this one. Yeah. This, oh. <laughs> Oh, tingly. And, uh... Just, Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That's weird. Yeah, let's go with the mood with the hat and everything. Yeah. Cool. All right, um, so the plate armor? 
You is are it? to plate, are you? I, I, I have done in some in your traditional style as well. I've worked with some artisans from um, up north, um, from a village called uh, Darkblood. Have you have you heard of it? Uh, I say proudly, I am Yagna Darkblood. So <laughs> yes, I know that village. And he gives you the eye and he's like, holy shit, you are too. <laughs> Last time I saw you, you are only a young boy. I can tell the faith. Your father, he's a great man. Please send my love. Uh, also, oh, by the way, while this is happening, I am just totally stripping out of my armor and just chucking it over a guy after like oh. mending. Madam, please, just <laughs> not not in the store. <laughs> just just any garters. I'm gonna go like the whole. Oh yeah, he's dead. Oh, all well, right. But he's avenged. Well, I well, e excellent. Well, may may his ancestors honor him in the afterlife. <laughs> I hope he died a warrior's death, as as one of your culture demands. Yes. I'm trying to remember how he died, because I'm pretty sure it he wasn't a warrior's fight. death. Yeah, it was. It, uh, oh, oh, it was, yeah, it was a fight to the death. Yeah, yeah, fight yeah. to the death yeah. with your um, cousin. Yep. Yeah. Nah, cool with that. Yeah, so, yeah, well, that's, that's not too bad for the ways to go. Mm. <laughs> like... The fact that uh, their their heads are throwing at you in a bag is a bit unsettling. In the back of your mind, they got the best time. <laughs> it's like, well, um, uh, I have uh, this late mail. I'm just gonna look it up. Late mm -hmm. mail. Uh, plate mail. Where are you? Yeah, plate, plate, plate. Heavy um plate. And he and he wheels out on what looks to be a trolley, like you know, dolly. Uh, this mannequin, like big, wide set orc. Um, what looks to be um, like specialty metals woven together in in a style that um, you've only seen um, on maybe some of the. Uh, tapestries because your family wouldn't have kept books and stuff of old orc warriors and it's finely woven steel and plate um it looks more like muscle but yeah it's it's metal to the touch it's full plate armor complete with like a helmet and and everything um and he's like oh all the joints articulate nice um it's Good for uh, big swings, but it should accommodate for your two weapon style. Um, all up, two thousand for this specialty made. Oh, shit. You will be armored to the teeth. And you, I'll just let you know, a proper set of plate armor in Dungeon mm -hmm. Dragons goes for one thousand five hundred. So, oh, okay. For, for specialty made plate armor, pretty, yep. pretty good. So, okay. But tell you what, I knew your father. 1800. Okay. How much is the platinum? Platinum? I like. I think it's 10 gold per platinum. Yeah, 10 gold. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I don't have the gold for that then. There's no way I can do that. Okay. Or perhaps maybe something a little lighter for you then if. This is uh, out of your price range. How much do you need? Yeah, I need a lot. <laughs> I don't have enough for that. He um, spent a lot on the Holy Avenger. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all right. Um, tens of thousands. Nah, if I can't do that, I can't. I can't do it then. I can't do anything because I'm just trying to get my AC past 17. That's all. But yeah, that'll be fine. Heavy armor would also make it hard for you to cast spells. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, insane. But it would okay. be very right. good for your fighter. -ness. But if you go with yeah. something more of a medium, say the scale male, male that um, Alana got, or or a nice light chain, or maybe a half yeah, plate. Yeah, no. Because what are we looking half at? Half plate. What have you got on? I've got um, chain mail at the moment. Mm. you got chain yeah. on, so that's. Yeah, 16 plus one plus... chain. It's plus one chain, somehow. We got that. 
Oh well, you you've got yeah. a plus one chain, so it's it's pretty yeah. that's pretty good. Okay, all right. I was trying to do something better. That's all right. All right. Sorry, <laughs> continue good. on from here. Nah, it's all good. So, um, anyone else need anything from the blacksmith? Yeah. Yeah. Did I? Well, while I'm there, um, you know, talking about armor, I'm going to uh, see if he has anything along my side of things. So I'll show him the armor that I've been wearing, which um, underneath my kind of like flowing robes because I've undisguised myself. I just look like I normally do. Um, it's still kind of the basic standard issue studded leather of the Will of Fire Wanderers because I, I grabbed it off <laughs> grabbed it off abandoned. So yeah. uh, it's seeing if there's anything anything that he does have that would be on the lighter variety um, that, you know, will increase my protection, go up, but it still make sure that I have plenty of maneuverability. All right. Just let me have a look. And he's looking, he's like, um, medium armor. Uh, it'd be like, uh, I'd, I'd be wanting to stick with light. I, I'm looking to both protect myself, but also deal maximum damage. Um, I'm sort of yeeting random bits of my armor at Guy. Random bits. Random bits. Yeah, I'm fixing it as I go. I'm like, oh, pauldron, huh? Gauntlet, huh? <laughs> I don't need all that. Yes, you do. It helps you. Um, but you should probably add that. Cause that's that's twelve AC. Yeah, out of the chest piece gives me an extra one AC, which helps. Oh, I just had the whole started armor. He's I looking don't... at you any second. I get the. Uh the need to move They're quickly and silently but um, a man of your skill I don't think would need to be armoured everywhere just somewhere with your vitals nice and safe yes yes and he points over to Alana who's now you know fastening this breastplate to her chest it's beautiful mm -hmm. intricately um forged breastplate he's like that might actually be perfect for you as you see a lot of the like cavalry men in the uh in the lantern guard they they tend to only armor the chest piece you know, chest area to keep their heart and lungs and whatnot from getting shot or stabbed or and whatnot if you come back with some uh, shots to the leg and or, or arm, but that's easily healed by you know, the clerics within the guard. A man like you seems like he can dodge and weave out of anything shot at him, so maybe something to just protect your uh, vital organs would serve you the best. Uh, it would be, I believe I've tried to... I'm just saying thing. I've tried um, anything metal before, and it's uh, been a bit too heavy. Doesn't allow me too much maneuverability. Um, but that's fine. You aren't using the right metals, then, my friend. Mm. So, because breastplates do not give you disadvantage on moving silently or stealth. So does that mean I do get oh, no, but, uh, uh, any medium armor? armor With this scale mount, yours is more. The, the breastplate in the front is just more of a. Um, you know, aesthetic choice. Okay. To, so to fit you. Scale mount. I have two yeah. stealth anyway, so it doesn't yeah. fucking matter. But, but for you, you would just get what seems to be this breastplate that sits um, on top of your shirt. It would deflect the bullets off from um, your your vital organs. Plus, as you put it on, you have maneuverability. It doesn't make noise. It doesn't hit against anything else that's metal. I oh, just uh, like... For, for for me, when I'm going around breastplate being medium armor doesn't change any of my actual armor thing. It what, it won't. You, it won't. It'll actually it'll actually bring it down because light armor plus dex, etc. Oh, so, will it? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking at it here because it was 14 plus your dex modified. Max yeah, too. it's it, but, yeah, yeah. And, and anything has to be anything has to be light. So it'd, it'd only really be like a magical thing or studded leather plus. Or studded leather. Or he doesn't have anything plus. It's this isn't a um, magical armory, um, but the he does have studded. 
If yeah, that's right. I've, I've, I've got started on now. Okay, so well, unfortunately there is uh, nothing that I can help you with there. No problem. He's, he's watching you, um, <laughs> Guy, put on this old um, studded leather full of holes and, and, <laughs> and whatnot. Excuse me, I've been casting mending on it. Is, uh, I can... I can Fix that. And I'm fixing see... it. I'm fixing it. <laughs> I you can see... also fix it. Yeah. <laughs> he seems a little bit dejected. Yeah, that we because, have it. Um, yeah, blacksmithing is a fine art that is uh, disappearing from the world. I'm literally whacking stuff with my all-purpose tool and just doing like, <laughs> and it's a ding, 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 ding. He's a... my um, my, my arm comes out of my cloak and I hand him. I well, I, I attempt to hand him my old leather armor that I had on. He, he takes it and he's looking at it. It, it. it is it is patches of leather you have sewn together yourself. Yeah. And he's he's looking at it. He said, "This is is that?" <laughs> no, no, I don't hurt cats. Maybe <laughs> some bear that was already dead. So, thank you. And he just. Drops it behind the <laughs> counter. Oh, well, thank you all for your patronage. It's uh, uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't help all of you. But if you're in the need for anything uh, specially made, metals or weapons. I'm good for weapons, to... ma'am. we got weapons covered. Anything that stabs or bludgeons or slices I specialize in. Like, our guns don't even need to be reloaded. As you say this, you just you just see an inkling of sadness behind this <laughs> dragonborn's eyes. I'm not destroying a craft; it's just a different craft. Yeah. Well, ever since the uh, the firearms came in, the uh, want for uh, swords and uh, the armor has waned. We use lots of swords. And um, you, you see now from behind him back out into the forges, um, men making what seems to be musket barrels and bullets and mass-produced items. I did need to ask you something as well, Kyle. Yes. Is there bayonets in this universe? There is. Can I buy one? I suppose you could. You have to ask. Okay, I will go up to Dragon Ball back while we're here, actually. Do you have a bayonet? Indeed I do. How much? Brutal. And he, he's like, I have a fair few of them, actually. And he puts these long, slender, like, uh, leaf bayonets out onto the um, counter. He's like, I specialize in many different kinds and uh, varieties. We have ones for uh, short-range muskets, uh, some for long-range rifles. Um, it all depends on the size Can of the I barrel. do an investigation check purely to look at which one has the best blade on it? Oh, you don't need to do in the check. You look at these things, and they are razor sharp. These are finely made, and he's actually excited to show you <laughs> some range of uh, uh, weapon that, you know, stabs. Because <laughs> how does... Um, how do they attach? So they would slot over the barrel, nice and snug. Um, mm -hmm. like you, and you tap them in. Okay, perfect. Or um, some of them would be, um, have special attachments, ring bayonets that go in and they lock. What's the one that looks most easy to take apart? It's more of a locking mechanism. You'd see like a ring that you would fasten to the barrel. Of okay, your perfect. gun. And it would lock in, gonna... you twist, and it's on there. Um, and this would just be a um, a spear point that you can okay. can you you can think. So you're practically buying a spear that you um, use as your bayonet. Okay, perfect. So I should I just put it in as a spear? Yes, a spear. That will give you a melee weapon um, without you needing to. Drop your rifle. 
I actually, it's, it's, there's a plan in place. Uh, what sort of sphere? Just plus one, plus two, normal sphere, vicious sphere, sphere plus three. It wouldn't be any the plus, because the pluses are... Magic. Uh, magical. This would be... Ma What's a vicious spear like? Um, Say. When you roll a 20 in your attack roll, there's magic weapon. No, it's magic weapon. Magic weapon. No, so it's just a normal spear. This guy just, he just specializes in mundane, everyday... Okay, um, so and no. how much is it? Uh, what's it say there? Because <laughs> I can't just look at it. Oh, fuck. Um, it only oh, be like 10, 10. Yeah, you can swear. It's past a minute and a half. We're good. Oh, uh, it's one. It costs <laughs> one gold. One gold. But so this assuming that be... he wants plus yeah. price, I'd say five. Yeah, five gold. It's it's a nice blade. It goes on the end. Locking mechanism. Actually, can I buy two? You can buy as many as you want. Go over it. Yeah. Wait, um, can, um, can, can I buy? Can I buy one or two as well? Yeah, yeah, go for oh, it. Oh no, no, no! I was buying you one. Shush, shush. <laughs> you, you um, go, to, go to get one, and she's like, <laughs> I've got two, so I just don't have the heart to tell this lovely, sad blacksmith man. But I'm gonna just completely tear this shit apart. But not now, not in front of him. I feel mean. Excellent. So you buy, buy that. Um, yes. Does anyone else need anything from the blacksmith while you are here? I'm gonna buy some throwing knives. Um, yep, Actually, definitely easy done. Do I need proficiency in throne, or is it just light? It's just light. I, I believe you. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I think throne is you don't need its own proficiency. I don't believe. There's someone out there screaming at me, going, "Oh yes, you do." Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Shush. <laughs> All right. And well, the Dragonborn, he thanks you for it and coming back. He says, if you ever need, remember, um, Catherax, uh, Flame Blade is my name. Uh, Catherax Flame Blade? Mm hmm. Cool. I like to keep their names. Catherax. Please come see me if you, uh, and he looks at you definitely, yeah, if you come together with that money, we'll outfit you in the finest armor. Fantastic. He's <laughs> just fantastic. <laughs> All right. I forgot I was on mute. <laughs> Idiot. <No. laughs> so, um, with that done, you all then realize that Molazar isn't there with you. Along comes trotting with um, a stack of books under his arm. What are you two been up? What are you four been up to? Um, I need some alone time potentially because I want to break a bunch of shit and then make it better. Just playing with my knives. <laughs> you see them all out. Oh, well, Alana outfitted in a nice, beautiful breastplate. And, um, <laughs> oh, I also got some sick threads. Sick threads. All right. Uh, what else do you want to. Uh, oh, actually, grab? can I ask Nolza real quickly? Because yeah. obviously he has books. What do you um? What do you? What sort of magic are you looking into? Is it anti anything to do with the ocean or the wind? Uh, uh, <laughs> Just because I know maybe? wind wall, so I know wind magic. Uh, <laughs> um, or is I it nefarious thing? Maybe. I just okay, let's imagine. have another dinner. I just some imagine point. Alana holding up like a grenade with a fan in it to make wind wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a shockwave that goes in one under direction. Lady. Whatever her name is. So oh, the stinky don't pinky want to just... chick. Yes. So I don't mm. really want to just pass out. Stinky out. pinky That's chick. Right. I will keep it on the down low. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that one. Yep. We're, we're eventually going to get to that, and it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> to be like, how dare you, Molzar? You put two in the stink and one in the pink. You do realize Molzar's <laughs> the pinky. Yeah. He's the stink. <laughs> It, no, no, it all ties back to the no, prostate no. jokes. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. All right, sorry. Don't have that problem I'm anymore. Very, thank you. Serious here. Oh, I'm right. being very serious, silly. Sorry, I'll stop. Well, without you know making role play out of it, I'll just say um, take however you want to divide it. A hundred gold out of the, the lot of you, and you buy uh, a few months worth of. Um, dry food that would 
settle you and the crew, because that's part of the deal. Mm-hmm. Um, barrels of fresh water, um, rum and grog, because obviously um, like yeah. glass longer. Yeah. 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 yeah um, right. Getting it. rum for the crew. Yeah, dry, <laughs> dry meat, stuff like that, just everything that I say. Um, Don't forget, I can also provide, like, endless amounts of beer or beer. wine. Yeah, 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 but um, no, not endless. Only a couple of gallons a day, right? I think that'll manage us. <laughs> Actually, no. If um, depends on how much uh, what the what the weather is like, um, how hard people are working, um, having the water there, just in mm. case you know you've went, hey, alchemy jug right. beer for the day, and then you've run out of fucking water, and everyone's just shit fuck drunk on the boat. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think the alchemy jug wait. I can make fresh water with it. I can make eight gallons a day. How much? Eight gallons of fresh water a day. Well, if you think you don't need any fresh water just for that, I'd say just, yeah, get, I'll just get use the beer. My alchemy jug. Yeah, just get the beer and, and the meat, but we'll keep it the same amount. Just make it easy. Um, <laughs> I'm also going to talk to Deadeye real quick. Ooh. Not like that. I'm not going to be one of those people. Um, Why not? <laughs> This is my real life partner. It'd be weird. Um, <laughs> and anyway, Alana has eyes for guy. She likes to rat men. <laughs> no, not for guy. For Rathu. Rathu. Only, only Rathu. Or is still on the ladies. Or for Walter. Um, no. So, uh, Jacob, do you have any ideas there? Uh, yeah. Well, I want. Like... doing secret shit, eh? No, well, no, it's um, it's, it's something awesome. that just uh, when we have time, I have an idea that we're, we're going through. So, I'm um, Alana being. I'm asking Alana for help um, to help me design and tinker with a spare musket that I have. Ooh. We're turning it into a spear gun. Well, that's what we want to try to do. So, no, no, it would be a gun that can fire underwater. Because that is a stipulation I've got for if you guys go into the water, your weapons will not fire if your gunpowder gets wet. This one you're making out of, like, torsion um, ropes, sort of like a crossbow underwater. Yeah, got a whole, bu- got a whole bunch of rope and stuff like that, and I kind of wanted to make it. Um, yeah, make that and, and just have a whole bunch of rope and have it like the rope, like kind of like a Gatling gun for it, like for where it wraps around and the rope's just oh, going. So grappling, you just... grappling gun. You're not a Gatling gun. Yeah, grappling gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, can I modify, because I bought multiple spears, can I modify my musket to do that as well while we're at sea? Yep, I'll allow you to, you know, shove an end into it. and. Like... I don't need to have like extra damage or anything just so it has the ability yeah but it, it'll be a one-shot fire though because once, once you you know shove this so you got your even musket. if i shoot i can still shoot magic out of my gun though well what's going to happen here is you're going to you have to refit the gun at that second like pack it full of powder shove that um spear end or whatever in to make a spear end in the end of it and when you fire the, the it's going to shoot the thing forward but it's also going to flare the fucking barrel out so it's okay, a one can shot. You my... can do it, but it'll can be I a one shot. Can I keep a spear on the side then? Yeah. So like you can you can decide to do that at any time. You just shove it in and do it. But once you're done, your musket is broken until you have time to sit down and well, you've got mending. You can repair it. You know, but actually, take... yeah, I can repair our guns like in the middle of battle, pretty much. No, mending takes a minute to cast. What? Oh. Yes. So that's what I mean. So like, it only take you a minute to like five minutes to fix it, but you can't do it mid-combat. So, like, okay, don't let me go in the water, end. guys. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> so, yeah. is there anything else you guys would like to do in the city before you head off on your voyage? Real quick. Uh, no, I think, I think I've got enough. So, like, um, from before, like, the musket that'll fire underwater now and kind of just be essentially like a rope spear gun type of thing. Yeah, it's it's working yeah. off... Yeah, it's it's more of a uh, modified crossbow mixed with, a, like, a musket sort of thing. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it'll fire underwater. It, it takes a bonus action underwater to reload because the spears would be about like that big. Mm-hmm. I just say if you want to go and buy a couple of javelins, uh, yep. you can use them as as spear. My yeah, old cool. uh, arc survival evolved knowledge is coming into handy here. I, I have, I have, I actually have three one javelins. Rounds, are, I have three rounds. javelins already, but I might buy two more um, just to bring myself up to five. Excellent. Well, you get your provisions, you ship them off, and um, as I say, Alani, you go and say goodbye to your parents again. Who are still? Oh yeah, I'll be, there. I'll be back. I'll be around. Apologizing profusely for uh, the deception that they have no knowledge oh, it's of. Oh, fine. It's fine. It wasn't their fault. It's fine. As you I'm, head I'm down right. to the docks to meet up with Captain Kale. And in one of the berths, you see this beautiful um, ship just adorned with um, kraken motifs, like tentacles and um, the head of it, instead of being like the mermaid, it's it's a giant squid. And you see a couple of the uh, the crew members moving um, your boxes and stuff um, up onto the deck, and and you see the familiar bald-headed um, blue tiefling leaning over the side. And it's like, hey, friends, you have made it way here, no? You're ready to head out into the ocean on your journey to the new world. Hello, friend. What was his name again? Captain Kale. K A. Oh, that was Kale. Kale. Yeah. Have you got everything you need? Uh, provisions are ready. We can cast off within the hour. Think so. Um, did we grab? Yeah, we should be right. We should <laughs> How be many right. rats do you have on the ship? Probably heaps. Awesome. We keep them there in case we get lost at sea. They become good eating when you all have no food, no? No. We should have enough food. We won't resort to Excellent. Uh, it seems we'll like you have become happen. very well prepared. Well, come on board. I'll send you to your bunks and uh, we'll shove off soon. No, I hope you are, uh, are used to the open ocean and none of no. you will be throwing up over the side. Only over the side. You have to clean it up yourselves. My first time seeing a boat. It's my first time seeing the ocean. Would I be semi-proficient on the ocean because I've, I've lived next to it my entire life, pretty much? I would say no, not, not you. You haven't really needed to go off on a boat. Your parents I've been are... On, like, boats, but I've been on, like, expensive yachts sort of thing. Sort of, yeah. Plus, um, you've never actually... You don't even have carriages at your house. Well, we just tell... We just, you just teleport everywhere because your family are wizards. We're elves. We're too dignified for walking. Um, you're getting on this beautiful boat. Um, as you come down below deck, you see um, it has a few cannon. Alana, expecting, you see this is the work of um, some of the artisan guilds that you have worked with. They so have... the cannon gunpowder, is that also susceptible to water? Yes. Okay. And you see that nice and packed up in the powder room. Um, at the front of the ship, I, believe it's I remember the where that is. At the bottom of the ship, the pack that they—I know. No, I'm not a ship guy. I know what parts <laughs> it has. I just don't, this, it'd be somewhere where it wouldn't know. take a direct hit from um, other cannons. Um, you find what seems to be guest quarters at um, on the second level at the back, complete with bunk beds. And he's like, it's... you'll stay here. It's so where you sleep, away from the uh, smelly uh, crew members. Don't mind them. They're great. They're good men. They work with me for years. You speak very highly of them. You have to. You have to have a trusted man to keep you safe in Thank these you. waters. They're all from my homeland, yeah. Ever since those uh, hoity toity havers, they decided to kick us out there. I've been living on the ocean. These are the ones that have never done battle? Or that don't, they're not soldiers as well? Oh, these are not soldiers, no. These are sailors and fishermen and all kinds. 
all uh, all different kinds of people from uh, all walks of life. See, <laughs> down in Gautier, we uh, have to make ends meet. Only the uh, half elves, they get their half elves and elves, they get their uh, rebates and kickbacks and what or not, eh? and business owners. I really want to know, like, the social welfare system for this, if they get rebates. <laughs> well, I know all these the systems. I never had access to it. I came into my mother. Oh. I had this skin. I had these horns. I was thrown into an orphanage. I had to make my own way. And trust me, orphanages in Cotier, they do not like my kind, no. What is this kind again? He's a tiefling. Things oh, that's fine. Around. We're cool with him. Well, yeah. One of our good friends is a tiefling. It's all actually two of our acquaintances. Indeed. Where are they from? You don't uh, see many of my kind about, no? The tiefling areas. No, I don't know. The <laughs> tiefling areas? So hell. I don't know. One's from like the forest or something. The other one's just magical. I've never asked him. But he just, he's never told me. But I never asked. So it's I'd on like me. to meet this magical man one day. <laughs> he sounds like uh, fun. Uh, but I will make preparations. If you're all snug, we'll head off. I'm happy to head off. Is everyone else happy to head off? Am I am I talking too much? I am yeah, ready. To... Excellent. I am ready. Well, hmm. I'm you... ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. So you put down all your, your gear and all your supplies, you head up to the um, deck of the ship and the sails are unfurled and the Kraken's Fury moves out of the docks of Mantle, out, heading west into the great unknown. And that's all we'll leave for this episode. We'll be back soon with us, a week for you guys, as we start our sail out into the ocean. Perfect timing. Yes. All right, we'll see you again in a week. Bye-bye. See ya.